cans. You can't only take ten cans. You know, it tastes better than that old cram or brahmin that's been sitting out in the sun for days. Uh, there, there are people out there who are hungry. You just gotta sell up the product a bit more. I'm sorry, but ten cans is all I can commit to right now. It was selling like crazy for a while next there, hit but the spot right there's been about talk about people getting sick. People, people get sick all the time. That, that, that has nothing to do with my product. Besides, I mean, I'm, I'm only selling the meat you people bring me. If there's something wrong with it, it's your own damn fault. Oh, so now it's my fault? Forget it, the deal's off. You want to sell your product to the people out there? Then you can get out there and do it your damn self. What? Hey, oh, oh, come on. Fine, leave. You'll be back. Bitch. Uh. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry you had to see that. Just some trade negotiations. Distributors. Always trying to talk their way into a bigger cut of the profit. I'm Theodore Collins, and I run Longneck Lakowski's. Purveyor of the finest canned food in all the Commonwealth. Bet you work up quite an appetite traveling. Wouldn't you like to sate that hunger? With a good can of Long Neck Lakowski's. What was that about people getting sick? Look, she was just angling for a better deal. A few people may have gotten sick, but I mean, I, a couple of contaminated cans doesn't mean it isn't still the best product. We buy old cans and the best meat the Commonwealth has so we can offer the finest product on the market. Looking to take a few cans home with you? What do you mean, contaminated? Uh, there might have been some mole rats that got into the machinery. I, I mean, a couple of cans were probably just... No, didn't get sealed right and spoiled. But, but I, I, I swear to you I, that, that I run a clean shop. If you went back there right now, you wouldn't see a single mole rat near the machines. Except on the cutting table. But there's nothing wrong with mole rat meat. We use a mix, you know, to give you the best of everything. Are you interested in buying some of Long Neck Lakowski's delicious canned meat? I might be able to take care of that mole rat problem for you. Really? That would be great. Can't stand the little buggers myself. I'll even give you a little something for your trouble. Hey. Mind if we talk now? Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, it ain't anything bad. Just you taking care of Bobby. I ain't proud of having to put you through that. That sort of dictatorial shit ain't usually my style. You seem awfully torn up over Bobby. Was there something between you? Nah, nothing like that. I just hate seeing guys like me use their sway to do that kind of harm. Hell, that sort of bulls the whole reason I became mayor in the first place. Some ass named Vic ran the town for I don't know how long before that. Guy was scum. Used us drifters like his own personal piggy bank. He had this goon squad he'd use to keep people in line. Every so often, he'd let them off the leash, go blow off some steam on the populace at large. Folks with homes could lock their doors, but us drifters, we got it bad. There was one night, some drifter said something to them. They cracked him open like a can of cram on the pavement. And we all just stood there, did nothing. Was there no one who could have helped? Who knows? Maybe. Honestly, we were all so terrified, we couldn't bring ourselves to move until it was over, let alone get help. I felt like less than nothing. Afterwards, I got so high, I blacked out completely. When I finally came to, I was on the floor of the old state house, right in front of the clothes of John Hancock. John Hancock, first American hoodlum and defender of the people. I might have still been high, but those clothes spoke to me told me what I needed to do. I smashed the case, put him on, started a new life as Hancock. After that, I went clean for a bit, got organized, convinced Cleo to loan me some hardware. 
Got a crew of drifters together and headed out into the ruins. Started training. Next time Vic's boys went on their tear, we'd be ready for them. The fact that you're standing here and Vic isn't would suggest things went well? Oh yeah. So, the night of, we all got loaded. Let Vic's boys get good and hammered. And burst from the windows and rooftops where we'd been hiding. They never even saw it coming. We didn't have to fire a shot. We didn't have to. But we sure fucking did. It was a massacre. Once we'd mopped up, we strolled right into Vic's quarters in the state house. Wrapped a rope around his neck, and threw him off the balcony. And there I am. Gun in hand, draped in Hancock's duds, looking at all the people of Good Neighbor assembled below. I had to say something. That first time I said him, they didn't even feel like my words. Of the people, for the people, was my inaugural address. Became Mayor Hancock of Good Neighbor that day. And from then on, I vowed I'd never stand by and watch ever again. You fought so hard to become mayor. Why leave? I ain't really the ponderous type. When an instinct takes hold, I listen. This time around, instinct said I should join up with you. Seems it was a good one. I just hope you get where I was coming from. I ain't out to bring harm to anyone that didn't earn it. Though I'm getting the distinct idea you got the same plan. Well, you probably heard enough of me running my mouth for one day. You wanna get moving? Welcome to have a look, but uh, stay out of the old basement. It isn't safe down there. You do what you gotta. Other side's chained up. I guess this area ain't regularly part of the tour. Bingo. 